Right, here's a quick video on uh, Suzuki DF30, uh, four-stroke outboard engine. Uh, got this engine, had it running, uh, and put it on the boat now. Just it had some problems. Obviously, it's been standing for a little while, but one of the problems being is uh, trim tilt motor, and I was shorting it out on the solenoid so I could tell which are here, two solenoids are here. So with the solenoids or relays, they're set to neutral. When you energize one, it'll put a live wire down to it. And then when you release the switch, it'll go back to neutral. And then when you press the button the other way, it'll energize that relay and then it'll send a live down that one. So basically what you're doing is you're reversing the polarity on the motor, spin it backwards and forwards. Now the motor take off, what you want to do is you've got a little uh, screw, like flathead screw on that side, which you can access through this hole here from around the back. You turn it four anti-clockwise and it'll stop, it won't come out. And then you can lift the motor manually and then I've chopped it with a block of wood under there. Oops, I've the yeah, I've blocked, I've chopped it with a block of wood. So you chuck it up in the air, then you take this, there's a pin that goes through there and that goes through excuse the seagulls that goes through there so it's just a circlip open circlip off and luckily it wasn't seized on there just push straight through and then this arm dropped down that then enables you to get to two uh, allen keys which are allen bolts which are there and there the diagonal apart and i'll show you the motor which this is the top bit so the two Allen screws go through there, or Allen bolts go through there and there. And then that whole cover, well, this is probably what you'll see, which is a reservoir as well. And I say, I think that's a level or filling screw there on there as well. But you've got two Allen bolts there and there, which hold the motor on. When you unscrew them, that'll pull off. There will be fluid coming out of there, so be careful. Um, that's the pin, which I took out. There's a sir clip, so as I say, it wasn't rusty, so it came out nicely. Now, the problem being with this motor, there's the armature, just a bit dirty, needs a clean in there. Uh, the bearing's good on there. And on top of that, you've got, on my one, you've got a little attachment that slots over the top. Make sure you don't lose it. I'll show you what it is before I lose it. Right, it's that, that slot fits on top of the motor which is there and then you've got a tiny little bit like little screwdriver head flathead actually fits in the hydraulic motor share that so yeah that just spins around and uh, drives the hydraulic pump but the problem with this is as full of shit in there but the actual magnets have come unstuck whether it's got overheated or what, I don't know. But these are the magnets and they've come unstuck from the wall of the uh, motor. So that was a problem with this. Let's so say what I'm gonna do is gonna clean them up and clean this housing up. And then hopefully I can aerodite the magnets back on with a two part epoxy aerodite. So, as long as it's got a gap in it, I don't think it matters like a stator where they go exactly, but as long as they're roughly where they come off. But as I say, I'm going to clean that up, put a flat wheel in there and a bit of sandpaper, and then uh, wash it all out with carb cleaner, and then wipe it down, and then so I'll restick the magnets in there. And hopefully, as I say, this will go back. You can see they're the brushes, so they're not seized. They're still good condition. So as I say, there's the two cables coming out, and basically all you're doing is reverse the polarity and that will spin the motor clockwise or anti-clockwise. So it will obviously work the pump forward and reverse for lifting up and down. So I will uh, clean up tomorrow and get that glued. Or should I do it tonight so it's gone off? Maybe I'll do it tonight. Yeah, so it's gone off. And uh, I will come back to you once it's cleaned up and glued. And there was also something else as well in the controller. I had to get a little micro switch. The little neutral micro switch broke. That's it there. And the little buggers are about 
23 pound that's where it broke so there's like a little micro switch little push button in there so as in, as the levers in neutral position it pushes on that and then that makes contact and the engine won't crank unless that's fitted on there so got to get one of those got one ordered hopefully that'll come in a couple of days so i can that fit, get that fitted as well and i'm going to go and clean down this motor housing now and see if i can get that stuck tonight so it's ready for tomorrow so come back to you then right i've cleaned it up now i've cleaned around inside with uh some coarse sandpaper got some grooves in there uh I'm not worried too much about bits of rust that's in there as i say the aerodite will stick to it now it's i put some uh what i put on there uh style max cleaner it's a bit like acetone so put that in there degreased it all and scored it up a bit with the heavy grit sandpaper and that's clean now ready and also cleaned up the armature as well on the motor and there are the magnets on there what i need to do is i just thought as well hopefully they got white paint on the top because if you spin one of them round you'll affect the polarity on there obviously once north and one south and vice versa but if i rotate that around 180 degrees then it will be out and it probably won't work properly so hopefully the white paint was on uh, there's no paint on that side so the white paint was the same side up uh, so what i'm going to do i'm going to sit it inside and then i'm going to mark when the magnets sit so i get the right depth of the magnets inside the casing and I'm going to mix up some two-part epoxy, which flavour of the day is a Gorilla epoxy. Uh, I presume there are other makes, but that's what I'm using. So I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to uh, resin the battery. I'm going to mark it first with a paint pen and then I'm going to stick the magnets in with the resin and let it set overnight. So I'll come back in a minute. Right, I've got the uh, epoxies going off now. And I've got the magnets stuck now in hopefully the right place i did mark it but they do try and <laughs> pull so he's got quite a good grab on the uh epoxy but he do try and spin around and try and you have to, have to hold them for about five minutes they just wanted to try and draw together so that to say is where the mark is i'm sure it's not going to matter whether it's a couple of mil up or down either way because it does actually sail over the armature a little bit but anyway that's done now it's resined in there so i'm going to let that go off overnight and then i'm going to stuff a little bit of grease down the bottom so maybe white lithium grease in the bottom there or maybe i'll stick some a bit of normal grease in there maybe and then i'm going to stick the armature in and i'll spin it around and see if it spins now and I can assemble it back together and then uh, give it power and see if it spins. So hopefully that is a fix. Right, this is the next day. I've stuck the two magnets together. The two-part epoxy has uh, seemed to have stuck it quite well. So they're in position and sprayed a bit of white lithium grease in the bottom. This is the top assembly, like the electric. And what I had to do was put the top bit in first because I won't be able to open the brushes up afterwards so as I say just spread the brushes apart and you can slide then the uh, top of the motor the armature in there and the bearing in there as well so what I'm going to do if I can get a pair of mole grips and hold that pin tight with the mole grips because what it'll do when I stick it in there into the bottom casing with the magnets it'll probably suck it in and I won't be able to hold that in my hand so I'm going to pinch the mole grips on there and that way then I can insert that in without that shooting through when the magnets get to it it'll just suck it straight out of my hand and then I'll be just left with the same problem again trying to pull the uh, brushes back around the armature so I'm going to do it off camera and I'll come back to you when it's in right all assembled now I've got the two Phillips screws back in there, the motor to the housing. I'm just going to hold it there. Got one wire connected 
<coughs> to the well, it don't really matter which side I think it's the uh, negative terminal and got this green wire then to the positive I'm going to touch it on there and we'll watch and you'll see it's working and I did reverse the polarity off camera and it spins back the other way but yeah it's uh, working lovely <clears throat> nice and quiet and instantaneous that's just bad connection on the battery when I haven't cleaned it properly but yeah so that worked so it saved me 200 quid so I hope that gives you a bit of insight how these motors work and common problems and what goes wrong on them so maybe before you go out and splash out the money if you don't mind having a go yourself then uh, <clears throat> the average diet is probably about 12 quid and probably about an hour's worth of work and obviously letting it go off overnight but yeah it's not hot or nothing and it's working perfect so yeah don't be afraid to take something apart and have a look and see what could be wrong and uh, like on this one uh, what I call a cheap fix thanks a lot See you next time.